Regulations Committee. They will vote on whether to send it to the full uh, city council. Hopefully it'll die right in that committee, and that'll be the end of it if it goes to the full committee. I really believe we'll have the votes to beat it because you guys came out tonight. It was just Abby and I speaking that would have been nice when they saw all of you for this issue. They were looking at you. They definitely noticed you. And it, it's, what you guys did was very important. I know you, you may have felt you were just sitting there, but your presence is what's really made the difference here. Kevin, do you know who's, what aldermen are on the codes and regulations? I know uh, Frank Beach and Doug Mark, and they both come out and said this is just bad news all the way around. The other one, we can find out and send it out by email so we can contact them. Bill Robertson, uh, Nancy Johnson, and uh, uh, William. Williams? <laughs> okay. Ann Williams, Bill Robertson, and Nancy Johnson. So if you want to just drop them very polite, very nice emails, just say you're against it, explain why, go to rockerprolife.com, there's some talking points. You know, to us, it's a religious issue, it's a life and death issue. To some of them, it's more of a free speech issue, and that's what we've got to make it. That's why we have Mr. Tom Brecker here, uh, the lead attorney for the Thomas More Society in Chicago, and I think he can address this now on uh, this bubble zone, and we have two lawsuits in federal court, Thanks, Kevin, very much. I'll be brief and I'll try and keep it simple. If anybody has any other questions, please come on up and ask. Let would be Jason Craddock. Jason has worked with us in this case. Uh, I'm the president chief counsel of the Thomas More Society based in Chicago. It's a national public interest law firm. I'm honored to be invited to Rockford and represent uh, a number of you folks over the years who've had trouble down at the clinic and party. filed a lawsuit. It started out, it was about the bus bench. A Rockford bus driver was seen defacing a pro-life sign opposite uh, to the, the Swedish Covenant Hospital. Uh, the city, uh, when they found out about the defacement, didn't cure it, but on the other hand, but on the contrary, said that political signs are not allowed on bus benches. Well, that sign was replaced with another political sign so it put the lie to the city's position right there. And we sued. We sued about that. We sued about the, no the nuisance noise ordinance being used against pro-life people who use their natural voices to call out offers of help and support to women who are going to the clinic. Uh, when Mr. Webster, uh, in the clinic, uh, used his loudspeaker to blast out rock music to drown out these cries of help. Uh, the city was prosecuting the pro-lifers and ignoring Mr. Webster. We added some other issues to the case, uh, and then uh, some of these slurs and slanders about HIV-positive folks and such, we added those to the case. The city has suggested they may be interested in settling this case. We just submitted a proposal to them. Uh, that was before this, this bubble zone ordinance was proposed. Let me tell you this, I join Kevin in thanking you from the bottom of my heart for coming out tonight because nothing uh, impresses uh, council people uh, more than citizens paying attention. You guys, your presence speaks volumes more, more than anything I could do in a legal pleading. But if this ordinance should, by some awful mistake, pass, Rest assured, ladies and gentlemen, it will be payday at the mines for the Thomas More Society. Uh, we will add, we filed four complaints in federal court, uh, amendments to the original lawsuit. This will be the fifth. And let me tell you why. The First Amendment is one very good reason. But more important than that, there's a statute in Illinois that bars a municipality, including Chicago, big band Chicago, from limiting labor picketing. If there's a labor dispute, the city cannot limit the pickets where they stand or anything else. Now, if they impose a limit on pro-life picketing, that's what we call discrimination. And the First Amendment bans discrimination against one viewpoint in favor of another. 
That's what would happen here. If any of you know of any labor picketing of any health facility in Rockford, please call us, call Kevin. I hope we can get names and addresses of as many as you as possible to let you know as many details about the, the case uh, as we can tell you. If we settle with the city, uh, we won't settle if this ordinance goes through, but if it doesn't go through and we get, agree on guidelines so the police protect the right of the pro-life people to offer help to women, uh, as they should, that's what the law requires, uh, and we otherwise uh, get satisfaction enough for uh, we will proceed with a case against Mr. Webster. We're not giving up on that case at all. And we're going to prosecute it all the way to judgment, whether it's in federal court uh, or it may be in state court. But rest assured, we are here to stay. We pitched the plea games. I represented uh, this fellow in Chicago named Scheider. Uh, I used to be a respectable lawyer until I met this fellow. He was charged with racketeering and extortion. We went up to the U.S. Supreme Court not once, not twice, three times. Uh, the case is still pending. We're in the end, the end game, but we won the last two Supreme Court decisions, eight to one and then eight to nothing. So we pitched complete games. That case started in 1986. Uh, and we're going to be around to the finish of this one. And if it's not me, it'll be uh, Jason uh, or his successor that uh, pushes this case to the final result. <laughs> Uh, we're not going to give up, and we don't uh, compromise. If there's a settlement, it'll be to set up a grievance procedure where we meet regularly with the police department, eyeball to eyeball, with the chief or his designate. Uh, as we already met with your mayor, who, by the way, I think would be supportive of our position, and uh, set up a way that these issues don't get resolved in police court, but they get resolved conference room face to face the way they ought to be, and that these police uh, officers, all of them, and of course some of them disagree with us, some agree with us, but all of them must follow the law, and that means protecting the right of citizens to offer women a choice. This uh, bubble zone, I'll finish on this note, is anti-choice. Don't let them use that word. Choice presupposes an alternative. Pro-life people are there to give these ladies an alternative uh, to help them if they're being coerced, to give them the strength to choose life. So, indeed, everybody ought to be uh, supportive of our commission on this and they say we won't give up until we win. Right, Kevin? Any questions, please ask me and we'll be happy to answer them.